Welcome to episode 284 of the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I'm Ashley Scott Myers, screenwriter and blogger over at sellingyourscreenplay.com. Today I'm interviewing Elle Callahan. She just directed a horror film called Head Count. She's been working in the business for a number of years, mostly in the sound department, but is now breaking out and directing as well. So stay tuned for that interview. If you find this episode valuable, please help me out by giving me a review in iTunes or leaving a comment on YouTube or retweeting the podcast on Twitter or liking or sharing it on Facebook. These social media shares really do help spread word about the podcast, so they're very much appreciated. Any websites or links that I mention in the podcast can be found on my blog in the show notes. I also publish a transcript with every episode in case you'd rather read the show or look at something later on. You can find all the podcast show notes at www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash podcast. And then just look for episode number 284. If you want my free guide, How to Sell a Screenplay in Five Weeks, you can pick that up by going to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. It's completely free. You just put in your email address, and I'll send you a new lesson once per week for five weeks, along with a bunch of bonus lessons. I teach the whole process of how to sell your screenplay in that guide. I teach you how to write a professional logline and query letter, and how to find agents, managers, and producers who are looking for material. Really is everything you need to know to sell your screenplay. Just go to sellingyourscreenplay.com slash guide. So now let's get into the main segment. Today I am interviewing director L. Callahan. Here is the interview. Welcome L. to the Selling Your Screenplay podcast. I really appreciate you coming on the show with me today. Thanks. I'm a pleasure to be here. So to start out, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up and how did you get interested in the entertainment business? <laughs> um, I grew up right outside of Boston. Um, and I just love telling stories. So I, uh, I moved out to LA when I was 18 um, and went to USC School of Cinematic Arts for undergraduate college. And then I've, I've stayed in LA ever since uh, working in the industry. Okay, perfect. And what were some of your first steps to actually turning this into a professional career? I noticed on IMDb, you have a lot of experience in the sound department. Um, was that a good stepping stone mm -hmm. to being a feature film director? But maybe you can go take us all the way back. Um, just how did you get those initial jobs, um, professional jobs in the industry, and then talk about sort of your path to getting to the point where you're directing headcount? Right. Um, so I started actually as a PA. Um, I went I worked in visual effects on um, some big studio movies. I just, you know, PA jobs are, you know, the lowest of the low on a movie, but, um, you know, you eh, to get you in the room with people and start learning and observing. Mm -hmm. So um, I worked in post-production on some Marvel movies and DC movies and Amber movies. And um, I worked a lot with editorial crews and um, started to really get into liking sound editing. Um, it's something I liked but didn't love. You know, I. I still wanted to direct so I worked for um, two and a half years in the studio system um, you know just putting in all my hours and my whole life into that and um, all my I just kind of saved up enough money to take a year off and work on my own thing mm -hmm. um, so I I left having met a lot of amazing directors and producers and um, and post-production uh, people and um, I went off you know to do my own thing knowing that I could return to that if I needed to and sure. once if it did work out you know I would have a lot of good um, people to support me um, so yeah, yeah. Um, so I took a year off to start doing headcount perfect so let's um, let's dig into headcount um, that's your latest feature film and maybe to start out you can just give us a quick pitch or a log line what is that film all about <laughs> well it's about a, a group of teenagers that go out to the Joshua Tree uh, desert and they accidentally summon a paranormal presence that uh, seeks to ritualistically murder them all over the course of their three-day weekend okay. um, and, and yeah <laughs> and where, where did this idea come from what was the um, the genesis of it um, well I, I love folklore and I love um, magic and monsters and I knew that I wanted my first movie to be a monster movie mm -hmm. I think they're they're fun um, and I, being from the East Coast, when I, I went out to Joshua Tree with some friends for like a three-day weekend, and I just thought it was a very unique landscape that I had never experienced before, and I thought it would be an amazing place to set a monster movie. So I kind of meshed those two things together, kind of took my experience that weekend and plopped a monster into it, and then uh, that's how the, the idea for the story 
came gotcha. about. And so you um, you have a shared story by credit on the screenplay, um, and then Michael Nader actually wrote the mm -hmm. screenplay. Maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Um, what, what did that relationship actually work look like? Um, did you guys kind of develop an outline together and then he went off and write the script? Um, were you giving him notes the whole time? Maybe just talk talk about that a little bit. Um, yeah, so Michael and I are really good friends. We went to school together. Um, he was originally, when I went out to Joshua Tree and kind of got inspired, he was on that trip as well. I see. And um, we both kind of sat down and I, you know, I kind of created this monster and I said, let's put that into that weekend that, that we had. And we kind of created the characters a little bit together. And then he went off and wrote a draft and he would then send that draft to me and I would give him notes. Um, and then we did, I think four drafts like that. So he had a lot of um, kind of freedom away from me in between. And then I would come back and we would talk about the story together and like what was also realistic in terms of making a movie that we could shoot for a certain budget because this was a low budget movie so we both kind of went into it with that in mind as well yeah. but um we having that weekend together out there and like shared experiences to draw from and, and having that like jumping off point and a big level of trust between us as friends really um helped our kind of creative partnership Sure. So it sounds like from the very beginning, you, number one, you knew that you wanted to direct this. You guys weren't trying to write a script and then sell it. You were writing something that you guys wanted to go out right. and produce yourself. And then also it sounds like you knew that um, at least roughly you knew what kind of budget you would end up having once you got this thing written. Is that fair to say or did you expect to go out and do a lot of fundraising? Yeah. No, no, we, we, we wrote it for a very specific budget range. Oh, gotcha. um, and I think that's why it was able to work so well was we weren't trying to do anything crazy ambitious mm -hmm. because we knew but we still knew like what we had at our disposal to push and and you know make the most of, of what we had yeah. so it was writing a realistic script for us sure and so let's talk about just shooting like that's the first thing as if I were to put on my producer hat and someone were to come to this project it would scare me a little bit to shoot a Joshua tree just because it's a national park and I'm sure mm -hmm. you need specific permits or you're liable to to get the ranger, you know, run you off and stuff. Um, maybe you can talk about that. Did you have experience shooting there? Did you do a little research before you wrote the script just to make sure that shooting there would be possible on the budget that you had and that sort of stuff? Um, yes and no. We kind of just wrote it assuming that we could do it, but with the freedom to, like, switch it if it had to be a different desert, then that was okay. Like, Josh, the tree itself wasn't integral to the story. It was just the desert um, setting in general. Um, but we've had friends that have filmed in Joshua Tree before, like commercials and stuff like that, and we knew that it was a fairly easy process being able to shoot um, at a national park. Obviously, there are many considerations to take in, but it was actually cheaper to film there than, actu than most locations in Los Angeles. Hmm. Um, so we were able to use that money that we saved with permitting to like have you know, like a medic and an extra ranger and like make sure that everyone's being very respectful, like extra PAs to make sure you don't go near certain plants that are, you know, um, like protected. So, um, you know, there are a lot of extra things that we had to do to be respectful, but um, it, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. So and why did you decide on a horror movie? It sounds like your initial reaction was just that it was some, you enjoy these movies, so that's the kind of movie you wanted to make. You're working in post-production. Did you start to meet some distributors and talk to them at all? Was there some business decisions where distributors were telling, yeah, low-budget horror can sell? Um, was there anything, or was it just mm -hmm. purely just that you enjoy these films? I mean, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I worked on, when I was in the studio system, the most fun I had on a movie was a horror movie that I worked on. And you know, anything that you do in, in this life, I think you should have fun doing. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of wanted to chase that. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, making a lower budget movie, you know, like statistically, horror has a higher return of investment. So it was an easier pitch to investors to invest in a lower budget horror film rather than a lower budget like drama, you know, cause, um, you know, there's, you get more bang for your buck. It's easier to create scares and things like that. And you, you don't have to lean so much on like getting big name talent. Um, really, it's, it's all up to you to create those scary moments and those, those scary moments will sell. And that's easier um, to do at, um, in the lower budget range. 
Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about just for a minute um, getting the money together to go and shoot this. Um, what was your strategy to raise the money? Was it self financing? Did you have some angel investors that you knew were lined up? Maybe you can just talk briefly about that. Um, I wasn't um, super involved with that process. I, my producers um, handled that, but um, you know, we pitched to anyone that would listen to us mm -hmm. for a year and eventually found um, you know investors that were willing to you know roll the dice with us yeah and what did you need so i think it's just it's just consistency you know like we had a lot of we we learned a lot throughout that year um mm -hmm. but just you know just keep going at it and just keep just keep pitching <laughs> yeah and what did you need to provide to these producers and ultimately the investors as a um director you know a first-time director coming on to do a feature film um what did you how did you get any pushback on that um and what did you need to prepare um a couple of short films what was sort of your background and what was your pitch to these investors? yeah i mean we we shot like um i mean a lot of it is passion i think as a director when you're pitching yourself you're pitching your passion because that's what you bring to the project um, and, you know, having worked with big directors too, that, that helped kind of my clout a bit, having worked on bigger studio movies, mm -hmm. um, and just having that experience. And then also like we shot a little kind of like teaser trailer for it to kind of show the style that it would be in. And we made, you know, a big pitch book and a, a lot, lots of visuals and things like that to kind of show the world. And um, having a big, also having a concrete plan about how you're going to sell the movie at the end of it, because at the end of the day, it is an investment that needs to um, make, you know, like any other product, you know, movie is a product. So having a really firm grasp on the whole, um, you know, on the whole of it, like yeah. how you sell it as well, makes you kind of more a more pitchable director, because it's like you come in there and, and know the, the big picture rather than just the creative side. I think knowing all aspects of it makes you stronger in, in whatever you're doing so um yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm curious, um, I know as someone who has done a little bit of directing myself, there's always this feeling, especially when you're newer to it, of just having that confidence and everybody's kind of looking to you, okay, what's next? What are we going to do? Um, where did you get that confidence um, to go in there and just say, okay, I'm going to be the director of this feature film? <laughs> Um, I think it was <laughs> just, I don't know, maybe it's just something else I've always had. It's just, I, just the passion, you know, if you, mm -hmm. if you love the script, you have to love your script. You have to be the person that, you know, is, is, it's mother, it's father. And then you just have to love it unconditionally and just bring that to everything that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sound advice. So it's like, I love headcount. I love my monster in it. I love all the characters. So, yeah. 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 How can people see headcount? Do you know what the release schedule is going to be like? Um, I do. So it's coming out this, what day is it? It's coming out on June 14th, which is a Friday, and it will be in theaters, um, in some theaters in LA, and then on demand and digital platforms. Okay. Perfect, perfect. And what's the best way for people to keep up with what you're doing in your career? Twitter, Facebook, a blog, anything you're comfortable sharing, I'll round up for the show notes. Um, I am pretty active on Instagram. Um, is just my name, Al, Al Callahan, um, and I, um, yeah, I'm shooting my next movie actually right now. This is one of my days off from it, and okay. I usually post, you know, I like to, I like to post a lot of behind the scenes stuff, you know, to mm -hmm. get people more interested in in that kind of stuff rather than just what they're seeing on screen. So, um, so yeah. Um, well, perfect. I will, I will get your, I am. I'll get your Instagram. Yeah, I'll round that up. And uh, congratulations, already getting into your um, second film, and and congratulations with with Headcount as well. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, hoping you guys all watch it. It's pretty spooky. <laughs> yes, sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. A quick plug for the SYS Screenwriting Analysis Service. It's a really economical way to get a high quality professional evaluation on your screenplay. When you buy our three pack, you get evaluations at just $67 per script for feature films and just $55 for teleplays. All the readers have professional experience reading for studios, production companies, contests, and agencies. You can read a short bio on each reader on our website, and you can pick the reader who you think is the best fit for your script. Turnaround time is usually just a few days, but rarely more than a week. The readers will evaluate your script on six key factors, concept, character, structure, market 
marketability, tone, and overall craft, which includes formatting, spelling, and grammar. Every script will get a grade of pass, consider, or recommend, which should help you roughly understand where your script might rank if you were to submit it to a production company or agency. We can provide an analysis on features or television scripts. We also do proofreading without any analysis. We will also look at a treatment or outline and give you the same analysis on it. So if you're looking to vet some of your project ideas, this is a great way to do it. We will also write your logline and synopsis for you. You can add this logline and synopsis writing service to an analysis, or you can simply purchase this service as a standalone product. As a bonus, if your screenplay gets a recommend or a consider from one of our readers, you get to list the screenplay in the SYS Select database, which is a database for producers to find screenplays and a big part of our SYS Select program. Producers are in the database searching for material on a daily basis. So it's another great way to get your material in front of them. As a further bonus, if your script gets a recommend from one of our readers, your screenplay will get included in our monthly best of newsletter. Each month we send out a newsletter that highlights the best screenplays that have come through our script analysis service. This is monthly newsletter that goes out to our list of over 400 producers who are actively looking for material. So again, this is another great way to get your material out there. So if you want a professional evaluation of your screenplay at a very reasonable price, check out www.sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. Again, that's sellingyourscreenplay.com slash consultants. On the next episode of the podcast, I'm going to be interviewing producer Steve Longi. He's been a producer for years, and we talk about his career and how he got some of the films produced that he worked on. For instance, he was instrumental in the development of the Mel Gibson film Hacksaw Ridge, and we talk in depth about how that project all came together for him. And it's a great example of how a producer discovered a story. In this case, Steve found this story, really liked it, really championed it, championed it for a number of years, and eventually was able to get it produced. Produced, turned into a major motion picture. So it's a great example of sort of how a producer finds a writer and how a writer can go along that journey with the producer and ultimately end up with a big major motion picture like Hacksaw Ridge. So keep an eye out for that episode next week. That's the show. Thank you for listening.